Here's what happens to your body if you quit sugar for 14 days. Now you might get leaner, you might notice some aesthetic changes, but here's what happens for sure. Your body's ability to detect sweetness starts to become modified. Things that are less sweet start to taste more sweet. In fact, people, people often comment on how they reset their ability to perceive sugary foods. This may be a great way to get yourself started on a diet where you reduce your sweets intake. So quitting for 14 days can make you look different, but the big thing is it changes how you perceive those sweet foods. Is this <clears throat> is this what we've decided the the uh, the time is? So I I remember this right. I shared this with you guys yeah. um, during my journey of getting ready to compete and, and dieting for the first time really competitively. Um, and up until that point, to be honest, even as a trainer, I never even cut candy and sweets out of my diet. I've yeah. always been able to include that in the diet and stay work around. Yeah, seriously, stay fat. I never really fast metabolism. You work yeah, out a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, n I never really like completely cut it out until I had to compete. Once I had to compete, I knew that I would have to tighten everything up, right? And one of the first things was like, okay, eliminating that stuff for an extended period of time. I don't remember exactly how long it was, but one hundred percent. There, I went from someone who never had truly, I think, enjoyed biting into an apple until mm -hmm. I was 30 something mm -hmm. years old. And I remember enjoying fruit and going, oh, I remember too that I thought I was just getting lucky at the grocery store. Like it was like, <laughs> I was that naive to what was going on. Seriously. I, I just, a special yeah. apple. Just, yeah. it, it never had dawned on me that I had, I had ever. cut. I had cut sugar, like processed sugars like that out completely for that long period of time. So I wasn't really thinking like I was, wasn't doing it for like any sort of intent mm -hmm, of like mm -hmm. be healthier or try and like reset my palate. I'm like, I got to compete. I need to track and measure everything. Candy's a waste. I got to mm -hmm. figure this out. And I remember going to the store. I remember biting into that apple. And then I remember it was some grapes and it was just like, and I remember a fourth or fifth time this had happened in a row. And I'm going like, I can't be possibly getting this yeah. lucky of just choosing the best fruit in the world. It's like, it's so sweet and it never tasted like no, that No, no, no. Complete transparency. You know, we, we often get suggested things to talk about that people want to listen to or that do well um, on, you know, social media or on YouTube. This is one of the things that they recommended. And oftentimes I'll look at it and say, sounds good. That's a topic I think we could talk about to bring value. Other times I'll look at something and be like, okay, uh, this is kind of like clickbait or then it dawned on me. You know what? Uh, cause, okay, you cut sugar. The rest of your diet matters as well. Like you could cut sugar and make up for it with other things and you, you might not lose any body fat. Nothing might happen to you at all. Um, but the way you perceive sweetness definitely changes when you consume less sweet foods. By the way, this includes uh, artificial sweeteners, okay? Mm -hmm. so even though they have no calories, the perception of sweetness is something that your body adapts to. And so when you cut foods out that are sweet for a certain period of time, and it's probably around 14 days. When you reintroduce things that are sweet, you'll be like, wow, they taste sweeter than they than, than I remembered. And this is a real thing that we notice when we cut anything that's hyper palatable out of our diet. Now, is there value to this? Absolutely. If this is a challenge for you, like it was for you, Adam, I know yeah. you always talk about this yeah. with, with sweets. If this is a challenge for you, then can you tough it out for 14 days and then try to develop new behaviors around sugar now that the signal isn't so strong. I think it's a valid strategy. In fact, this was one that I would use with certain clients all the time. I mean, this is what also uh, got me to enjoy vegetables because I also had this very, I mean, if, if you think fruit was bland for me, how do you think vegetables yeah. were, mm -hmm. you know? And so they were even, even less palatable after doing this and finding like, wow, real enjoyment for fruit and actually starting to like vegetables, I was able to completely into my thirties, change my eating behaviors because it was something that I kind of, so man, the value of eliminating that for that, just to open up the opportunity. Cause how many times have you guys gotten clients just like, Oh, I hate vegetables yep, or, Oh, yep. I don't care for like, they just right. tell you. And they've just accepted that, which by the way, I would be guilty of probably saying That's in right. my late twenties, I might've said something like, Oh, I just, uh, vegetables taste terrible to me. I'm not a big fruit guy and whatever. And I was like, Oh, of course, because I've been eating processed sugars for like mm -hmm. by the, by the bag full for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, just even moving back to having something that's paired with fiber or something that's going to kind of move a bit slower uh, in your digestive process to just challenge, you know, uh, that, that whole system, um, it has so much more value to it, even if it's like sweet, but to, to, to get yourself back to that, 
uh, experience where you can actually have fruit and you can taste uh, the sweetness of it uh, and not be like completely, you know, jacked from, because the thing is like dextrose and these, like a lot of these like artificial sweeteners, the potency of them in terms of the sweetness is at such a high level. It's it's actually like pretty appalling it to me. We, that changes, it changes how you perceive We weren't sweetness. supposed to do that. It was like we were as humans, like if you ate sugar, I've talked about this a long time ago. It's been a long time since we brought this up. But if you were to, uh, in nature, find the, like, I think it's 30 to 50 grams of sugar in a can of soda. Right. If you were to consume that in nature, that's like eight feet of sugar cane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah, um, panda. Yes, <laughs> the um, the the amount of calories you would burn just trying to gnaw through that. It's not them. nearly as sweet. No, yes. it's not as concentrated. So we just weren't we weren't designed to consume it at that high of a level. No, and this, potency. this is true for all all factors of palatability. It's not right. that sugar is evil, but sugar is one of the three things that makes up palatability: it's sugar, salt, and fat. And then we figured out other chemicals and textures and things that add to that, enhance that. But those are the three main ingredients. And when you consume hyper palatable food over a period of time, and or just sugar or just whatever, your body you perceive it differently. Your yeah. your body literally adapts to Changes. that signal. And then more natural sources of that, which are not engineered to be as powerful, just don't taste as sweet. Look, I'm going to say something that the average person who hasn't trained people who let's say watches their health is going to think is absolutely absurd. But I guarantee both you, Adam, and Justin have had a client say this to you. Have you ever had somebody say to you, I don't like the taste of water? <laughs> That's, yeah. That, yeah. Th those are- I need something in it. Chronic- To drink it. Chronic diet soda drinkers yeah. or people who drink you know, sweet drinks. Crystal light or something. They, too, it, right? it changes their palate so much. I had more than one client say this. Where they, the first time I heard it, I thought it was absurd. I thought they were joking. I'm like, yeah. water. It's water. But it's because <laughs> it's, their palate has changed so much that- Water is off-putting because it doesn't have that signal. So this, it changes how you perceive all foods and all things. And so, again, there's a lot of these challenges about cut sugar out, do this and that, whatever. I think one of the greatest benefits across the board is just shifting your desires and palate to a point where you can work from a new perspective. And then it's easier to avoid them. It's easier to move into, into better behavior. So at the, at the end of the day, that's what's most important. You know, this, this conversation reminds me of some of the topic, the conversation we've had around GLP ones too, and the, and the effectiveness or the lack of, right. And knowing that like, you know, part of that is th there's nothing magical in the 14 day cutoff. If you don't do anything about the behaviors or change it with new behaviors, the same right. thing goes for this GLP one. There's nothing magical about it. Just cutting, you're, re you're greatly reducing the calories significantly. So that's obviously what attributes to the weight loss and it opens the door for you to then be able to change behavior, modify behaviors around it, which can be life-changing from somebody. Yeah, but if yeah. you don't treat it that way, you're not going to see the give result. Give you space to even look at it objectively, you know, and not uh, just kind of fall into your routine and patterns. It's like, it, you know, the, the 14 days away from it gives you that kind of different perspective, but you have to act on that uh, while you're going through it, start, you know, really actively pursuing better habits. This is, in my opinion, so there's a lot of physiological things that happen with, with GLP-1, some aglutide, trisepatide, and others, uh, where they, you know, they blunt appetite, they improve insulin sensitivity, there might be muscle sparing, immunomodulating effects, et cetera, et cetera. But I think personally, especially in, in, when it comes to obesity and the use of these uh, substances for obesity, I think one of the biggest most valuable aspects of this is how you could potentially use this, as you guys are saying, for behavior modification. So anybody watching, listen to this right now, knows exactly what I'm about to say. A habit is, is hard to break at first, but the longer you stay away from a habit, a bad habit, the easier it is to not go back. Over time, the first, it's like why, the, why quitting something is so hard initially, but then over time and over years, it's just easier and easier. Well, when you practice a behavior, a habit, a bad habit, whatever, you are continuing to train neural pathways, neural ne networks that exist in the brain. So it's a, it's a strengthened, it's a strengthened neural network or strengthened behavior or habit. When you stop that habit, when you stop acting on a habit, those neural networks start to naturally weaken. The body adapts just like it does to activity. You don't exercise, your body pairs muscle down, you don't need it. You don't do a habit very often or you stop it completely. The brain says, we don't need to maintain these neural networks. It's expensive to do so. Let's prune it down and focus on some other stuff. 
So you don't do this. You're not engaging in this uh, type of eating behaviors that you did before. Maybe you had a strong appetite signal. So when you were stressed or anxious or whatever, man, it's so hard to stop eating this way. It's so hard. It's so hard to deal with this obesity. Got it. Such a strong pull. You take a GLP-1, the appetite or this craving signal is greatly weakened. Now you can go, I'm not going to eat that. I'm not even thinking about that. Or it's easy for me to resist that right now. This is actually quite easy. But then what you do to make it even better, and this is where I think GLP-1s are going to shine with the right coaches, by the way, is, okay, now that you feel stressed or anxious or whatever, let's replace that old behavior with a new one because while that one's weakening, let's strengthen this with this new one and let's replace it. Then when you come off a of GLP-1, your appetite comes back, but that drive, that, that indescribable drive that makes it impossible for you to say no is no longer there. And instead, what's there is this other one that's not as loud as the old bad behavior, but now it's there and it's kind of pulling you and you go, you know, I've actually learned to do this other thing and I'm going to keep strengthening this. I think that's where the and, real hundred uh, percent. And you learn, you actually can learn to like, enjoy it and like it. I mean, at least this has been my experience with clients and my experience, my personal experience, uh, with the sugar and fruit. Um, I've never looked back. Doesn't mean I haven't had candy since then, but like my body now right. craves the natural fruit and I enjoy that as much that it's not hard to not have candy mm -hmm. for three months in a row. It my I can wear as a, you know, in my twenties, there's no way, there's no way mm -hmm. I, I would string two or three days in a row of not enjoying some sort of a candy treat snack, something that was high, high on processed sugar where now it's like, because I've built this new relationship with fruit. There's last night I, you know, had some cocoa whip with blueberries and just like enjoyed that thoroughly, how good that tasted. Yeah. And so that wouldn't have, that wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. And it wouldn't have happened had I not you use that time away of breaking that behavior, introducing new behaviors around it. And then also, and I, and I think maybe a part of it too, you're, you, you have to have a, you know, self-talk, I guess, you know, or write it out if you need to, of like telling myself, like, I, I think I liked it. I like this, yes. you know, this is good. This yes. is good for Journaling me. Journaling is really important. I enjoy for... this. Yeah. I think that, you know, this is the same way that, you know, the people that I've helped out that are going through like GLP ones, is, you know, the first step is then becoming aware of these behaviors that are starting to prune. Like, oh, Adam, you know what I used to know? I used to always do, and I didn't realize it, was I would just grab snacks, in, you know, with my yeah. kids. I'm putting their things together, and I would throw four or five in my mouth, and then I would be putting this together or making dinner for my husband. I would grab this, and I put, and I didn't realize how much of that grazing I was doing all day long. And now I don't do that. I have no desire to do that. And it's like, but they're aware. It was like a. It was almost an. It was impulse. Yes. It, it like be underneath awareness is right under awareness where they were making those decisions. Yeah, I think we need to keep talking about it this way and get ahead of it because I, uh, we all strongly believe that this. I mean, because millions and millions of people are getting on these and using these uh, every single day. It's going to be one of the most widely used uh, medical interventions, not just for obesity, but just across the board, because so far what they're showing. We got to keep communicating this way because if people do it the right way with good coaching, um, and of course we, we've talked about before, um, you know, strength training and increasing your protein and strategy around that. If 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 they do things the right way, this this could be a, a really There's benefit to it. This could be a good thing for a lot of people. Yeah, that are in a really really tough uh, position. This is why we created our our Maps Jail P One program was specifically for this. We want to get ahead of it and really show people the right way to do it, which we strongly believe it's going to result in better results, no muscle loss, maybe some gains, some strength, uh, good metabolism, healthy, and then a pathway towards getting off. Yep. So it's not something you use for the rest uh, of your life. Yeah, I think it, it it really sunk in for me how how widespread this is becoming. When we went to one of the last uh, trainer convention things that we did where we had all the trainers we were speaking to, and one, uh, that was a majority of all questions were around that. Yeah. And then two, every single trainer I talked to had a minimum of two to five clients already, already on know. GLP. Well, isn't it interesting? Yeah. Cause that's the perspective of people actually in, uh, the gyms and are working with people and coaches and all that, their perspective versus like just your everyday average person that's heard the news reels and the, the hot takes of like, uh, GLP ones. And like, it's so um, it, it's going to be interesting to see how all of that kind of merges uh, together. You know what else is crazy that a lot of people don't know? So a lot of people, I think we take for, for granted because we're in the space, we understand the difference. 
But a lot of people don't know that Ozempic is a brand name for a generic called semaglutide mm -hmm. or Terzepatide is brand name is, I don't know, I think it's Wigovi, if I'm not mistaken, or Manjaro might be Terzepatide. Of course they don't. If they did, then they would, everyone would go through a company like Transcend and buy their, their, Dude, their GLP-1. It's much They're, reduced price. Because it's a fraction yeah. of the price. Bro, it's, it's like the cheaper. same exact thing. There's a lot of people, for example, that still don't know Advil is ibuprofen. Mm. It's the same drug. Yeah. If you got ibuprofen generic or you bought the brand name Advil, it's the same exact uh, drug. Now, a lot of people know that, but some people still don't. A lot of people have no idea with this because the brand names, like if you go buy, get Ozempic from your doctor, even with if insurance covers, it's like a thousand bucks a month or something like that. It's yeah. way overpriced versus what you could get. It's the same exact thing through um, a FDA regulated. We're not talking about gray market. Like this is legit. Go through a doctor, the whole deal. It's just generic versus brand name, and it's a fr a fraction of the cost. Yeah, you know. By the by, which uh, uh, we're getting a lot of messages since we launched the program from people who are who want to follow the program and also start a GLP one at the same time. So okay. we set something up with uh, with our link at MP Hormones. They can go there and get a discount. I believe that, I, I believe, uh, and maybe Doug can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Transcend 2 is putting those people at the front of the line so yeah. that they can do that. So get it like real quick. Yeah, yeah, so when people purchase the program, they're going to get a link so that they can get 30% off Good. and uh, priority service. Good. Good. Okay. But you have you got to be the right person, by the way. This yeah. is not, like, you want to lose yeah, 10 pounds for the summer. Yeah. We have this programs just a, yeah, a little <laughs> cosmetic thing. Yeah, this is not the one. Do you think there's a do you think there's a large percentage of people that are like that? Think about all the people uh, that want a faster way to just lose some weight. There's people want a cheat code, bro. You know, I mean, and so that's there, there's going to be some of while, that. Right? I just I hope that the majority is people actually like could really benefit from it, and need it, or in that category of like I'm. Mm. I'm obese and, and I could really use some help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. You said cheat code. You just reminded me of something that I, well, I think it was last week I wanted to bring it to you guys and I had forgot about it. I saw this thing on, you know who T-Pain is, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do you know the he has auto tune, dude? Do, do you know that? Yeah, auto tune. But you know he's got a great voice. He does. Too. He does. He's yeah. So that was voice. that was. I, I, know. I, I know that like he's obviously notorious for being one of the guys that like abused auto tune or whatever, and that was like a knock for the long time. And then I heard him do like a regular song. No, I've he, heard like, him. He's like he got an un, for real. Yeah, he's really good. good voice. Anyways, why I bring him up? Did you know he hasn't toured or done anything for like four years? Okay. Okay. He was being interviewed and asked like. You know what's up? Why why no more tours? Is that there's obviously he's got a huge following of people that he can make a lot of money doing it. And he's like, why? He's like, I, I make so much more money playing video games. He makes <laughs> what? he makes between forty and fifty thousand dollars an hour on Twitch. Oh, just wow. to show up because people want to play. Yes, or wow. watch him. That makes so much Bro. sense. What a move no for way. a celebrity on the way I out. know. Hey, and supposedly, wow. wouldn't you want to play a celebrity? Hey, yeah. hey, and supposedly, That's I don't. He, I, he says he's not even that good, which that yeah. is like mind-blowing. Just because he's well known, I, it could be. Like, and I don't know if he was just like tongue in cheek. I'm not that good, and maybe he's really good. Yeah, but. Because typically the the kids that I know that make a lot of money on Twitch, they're really good, right? Yeah, they're, they're good because they're, they they're, make money. Yeah, yeah they're, they're talented they're amazing, on the yeah. game and they're good commentators. That's kind of what makes the kids yeah, yeah. want to follow someone, right? They, they they can beat all the levels, they know all the hacks, right. and then on top of that, they have good commentary. This equals Dude, a lot of money a on kid, Twitch. I'm just trying to think about that and like you could play like a celebrity. That'd be so interesting, like right? Yeah, because I mean, I used to just be enamored by my older brother's friends that were really good, you yeah. know, just in that aspect of it. But then like throw some like random, totally. like, Bro, you know, it's like 40, celebrity in there. 40 to $50,000 an hour. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't so he do that? Money. He's like, I've made so much more money playing video games than I ever did in my that's music so career. So crazy. why would I go tour like that? And I'm like, I feel like that's such a play now for lots of celebrities who are kind of like, you know, you get your, your peak of popularity kind of yeah. come down and be like, cool, I'm going to go. I also think the it's hot tar girl is going to be. Hey, like, I, <laughs> I also think it's such I'm a huge win for free market again. Like I think it's yeah. such a cool free market win here. Like yes. here you have 
in the music industry, everybody knows there's there's like a, there's a lot of control and power yeah, and monopolies, yeah, yeah. and there's always been that like you know fighting back on the man who's controlling all of these all these artists who they're the real artists and they only get a fraction of their record uh -huh. sale. So it's like how what a cool like f you right back is like you know what I'm not gonna do no tours I'll just play video games because I've built up enough of a pe enough people that want my attention that I can play a goddamn video game and that they'll is pay me. So cool. I know. I, I thought that was so cool. I still trip out that. I, it, it might be South Korea. Maybe Doug can list up. They fill out stadiums yeah. for gaming. Oh, yeah. Bro, that's yeah. here. Stadium. Bro, that's here. For people to watch. That's here. Stadiums. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So remember, just stay, like, like remember a, when we had uh, Mark Masteroff's buddy on the show? Now I know online people yeah, know. The, the Arco, Arco Arena gets mm -hmm. the, or, or the old Arco. It's not Arco Arena anymore. I forget the name of the, the new arena in Sacramento now. That shit fills out for Just fucking for video, video games. games. That's so crazy. They have their own like <laughs> Super Bowl yeah, event. And, yeah, it's crazy. Video game leagues. Yes. I know yeah. they do that. They yeah. own a team, yeah, in the Bay Area. I forget what the I name knew of they it do was. That. I just find that so fascinating. It's yeah, so no, it is. It's interesting. Weird. Yeah. So, so you I, go to watch it. Well, I what it, what really tripped me out was okay, so I understood it um from like a, a kid. Like I, if I was a teenage kid and that was like a thing, like so what was a big deal? We used to buy the magazines, okay? So yeah, Game Pro. Yes, when oh, Game Pro yeah. came out and Nintendo it had power too, the the uh, power. the hacks to the levels yeah, yeah, yeah. or it had like codes, things like that. you love that, right? Sure. So this is a version of that, right? Now I can just go online and I can watch this kid who already beat the level, who I can watch do it, and then now I can go do it. Yeah. Now that would be my desired outcome. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I could not, for the life of me, wrap my brain around like why my forty three year old best friend. Like sits and watches <laughs> yeah, these that's, things. That's mind boggling. Yes. Yeah. But it shows you like the uh, just the addictive behavior Which of that. I guess. Well, I know. I, my I mean, kids are into it because it's like uh, they've hacked that whole concept of upgrading your character and like having like exclusive yeah. uh, skins and, and different like avatars they could be like so and they and they've. You've done a masterful job of this, like in that, uh, whatever that stupid Fortnite game is. Yeah. And, uh, it and so you get like Marvel characters, and so it's like you know now I can be Deadpool, and so oh, he's going around on Deadpool. Daughter, daughter I can be uh, you know Wolverine. She's got M &M. She she plays as M &M Are, sometimes. Yeah. Now has yeah. has the new app made its way that. to your eyes? I brought up a new app about a, about two or three months ago to you guys. I don't know if you remember it or not. Uh, I think it's called What's Not. Is that right? Don't What's Not. It's a new app that's like exploded in the last like oh, yeah. six months. It's called What's Not, I think is what it's called. Um, are you, are, is it not hit your kids yet or anything? No. So What's this thing is not? like, okay, so think of Instagram and Snapchat and all these apps that went crazy. That's, this is it, right? This uh, next level, this. I think my, and, uh, Ethan might have brought And it's this really, po uh, the sneaker game, it's big now. The car trading world, it's big. And people get followings and then they it basically they basically merged e-commerce to social so like imagine if i had everybody on my instagram and i decide uh is that it right there what not dude yeah. that might so be it's a live it's a live shopping marketplace and you can control it yourself so and it is like so i've even considered putting my sneakers so this guy who has a following of ten thousand people flip sneakers he gets on there and he's so basically it's a shopping site yes but it's live and social so it's all and and dude. Oh, the, that's brilliant. So the 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 wow. innovation I'm watching happening this. So my buddy, okay, again, same my same buddy who's addicted to video games. Poor guy. I'm not gonna shell him out and tell him who it is. So, <laughs> yeah, so, totally, so, yeah. But I had it. I gotta share this shit because yeah. it's like so wild to watch it happen to your best. Like my best friend, and I go, go back to childhood, right? And like we're 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 together and we're like doing barbecue and stuff like that. And he's got his phone going. And I can hear him. Like, the fuck are you watching, dude? Like we're in the middle of doing stuff and he's still got it playing. And he's like, oh, this is this. You know, this guy I follow, he's, he does auctions on, he opens boxes of cards. And I'm like, you watch a guy, <laughs> like, please tell me why. Yeah, like, yeah, what? Please make it And good. so he starts making the case for it. And not, this dude's got the lexicon, it's got the own lexicon of like, oh yeah, that's yeah, a, a whole world. Yes. And I'm like, oh my God, bro, listen to you right now. But then here's what this guy did. They have created... This is so brilliant. Okay, so that this marketplace is a place where you can buy like cards like these, like expensive mm -hmm. cards, right? The PSA 10, like cards. So what these guys do is they get these and you have to just, to, you have to pay to play. So even to be able to get an, a bid on one of these cards, you got to pay say 50 bucks or a hundred dollars entry level. But I, the guy who holds all these cards, guarantee that you'll get at least a card that's worth $25 back. That's a, you know, mint, 10 card right. of so-and-so. So, so you know that you're you're spending 50 to gamble, but I guarantee you- At the get, very least, you'll get 25. You'll get at least get something like that. And then you have the chance 
to get an opening of a 1999 tops whatever card, yeah. and in there could be a Michael Jordan, or it could be this right, or that, right, and right. you could win $1,000 so or he turned $10. It into a game, he turned it into a game. Bro, so yes, they have gamified, this, and he's not the only one, this guy that I'm watching, huh. but they have they have blended gambling and gamified selling and auctioning dude. cards, and dudes making of course, dude. Wow. Listen, so Brilliant. much money. Of course. And watching like my 40-something-year-old best friend <laughs> yeah, with a full-time career and two kids <laughs> yeah. addicted to it. Like, I'm like, damn, bro, this is crazy. Well, it trips me out when I go yeah. to arcades now because I'll yeah. take my, my little ones to arcades, and the majority of the games in the arcade are like gambling-style games. Yeah. Yeah, They're yeah, like yeah. Yeah, they want to get quarter, the tickets. So pushes the, yeah, yes. It's gambling, though. They, you know they, I mean? Yeah, but they don't like, care it's a loop about winning. Thing down. They don't care about winning the game. They care about acquiring the tickets and things so they can go purchase I think they're literally tapping bullshit. into it that is. same gam it is. gambling It's a addiction. loophole. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not legal. You can't legally like set up your own gambling sites. No. So it's a legal way to, like, what these people have done. It's really brilliant. Like, it's so brilliant that I had, like, I told my buddy, I'm like, why are you on this end? How much would I have to finance you to become that guy? <laughs> like, I'll go buy the boxes of cards yeah. for you. I'll invest. Like, you're my best friend. I'll invest 30 to 50 grand to have you go, like, sit on these dumb sites all day long yeah, and do sucker all these people <laughs> in and then cut me in. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, and literally, yeah. he was, like, game planning for it. Okay, this is what we would do. You know, this is it what It sounds to me like that, that, like, cup, you know, and ball, like, Trick, shell game. The shell Bro. game. It's like a shell game. It is such a. It's such. A, I mean, he. There's. A, a, I. I wish I watched long enough to really be able to explain it better. Because you guys will just have to see it. Because he's even doing. And things. Is, he, is he selling like they used to sell? What's that TV show? That, that yes. TV network? Yes, where like, selling like products? the QR code. Yeah. And while yeah, it's yeah, going, yeah, yeah. other little pop up. QVC. Yeah. QVC. Uh, you, you can you can bid up a thing, and then he's doing giveaways while it's going. Yeah. I mean, he this guy just runs around the clock, just nonstop yeah. hustling. And it's and as long as there's people and they're active and dropping however bids, good of a, however good you are, uh, that's how much money. You'll and make. I and I watch my buddy. My buddy's got a thing on the side. And it's like bid one dollar, two dollar, three dollar. He's just what, what we're talking to stuff. And he's like just throwing bid. dollar bills away, like just <laughs> you know at yes, the yes, chance yes, 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 that yes. It, his might hit, <laughs> and then and then he gets ooh, it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, <laughs> I want that, bro. It is like so crazy to me on how how have, brilliant it have is. Have you guys ever uh, seen the the bloopers crazy. on that channel that QVC? You ever seen those bloopers? where people are trying to like and check out this ladder it's so stable they fall oh, <laughs> it's all live no oh, no, no I haven't seen that, seen that. oh I'll they're so, check that out they're so, do you guys still have when you go to an arcade now although they're not as common uh, as they used to be but is there a video game an old like is there a game that if, if you go to the arcade you'll play oh yeah if you see it what's your game yeah Gauntlet Oh, you play Gauntlet. I loved it. Wait, which one's Gauntlet? That's the axe. That's yeah. the axe oh, guy. The play with a wizard and a yes. dwarf. Oh, yeah. And a, uh, yeah Great game. Warrior. Oh, yeah. So if you see Gauntlet, you're going to play Gauntlet. Yeah, 100%. I would sure. play that. 100%. Is that which one's yours? Oh, yeah. I would definitely play it's that. It's also Gauntlet? That's so rare, though. Like you can't it's rare. You rarely see that oh, one. I loved that game, X-Men, I would play. I love Strength that Street Fighter. Great. Street Fighter. If I see Street, Street Fighter, yeah. If I see Street Fighter, it's over. Yeah. Do, did I tell you? Although I will what, tell you, would you this. prefer that or Mortal Kombat? Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Too. Yeah. By the I'm time Mortal Kombat. Kombat came out, I kind of like stopped doing uh, it. I kind of like, did. I tell up you, in Mortal Bro, Kombat. Oh, I really? So I'm like you. I was kind of on the way Mortal, out. Yeah. Mortal Kombat. Was like, time. dude, finish him. Yeah. Of like, course, come dude. On. Of course. Yeah. Did I? So, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you guys. I was at uh, the arcade up in uh, Santa Cruz on, uh -huh. on the boardwalk, and they have Street Fighter there, and I'm there with my kid. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, check out this video game, buddy. He's like, Papa used to play this when he was a teenager. And I'm playing it in another. Are you Ryu? I could be. I could. Guy? I'll be, be whatever. Anybody. I could be anybody, bro. Yeah, yeah. I could be anybody. Okay. Yeah. But at the time, I was playing Guile. Dosh I, was a, I could beat. I really I could play everybody. Yes. Okay. But but yeah. Guile was the first guy that I learned. I loved to Guile. Guile was, was of course you did. He looked like Guile. <laughs> <laughs> you're, dre hey, you're dressed like him in your camel hey, pants today. I, I, <laughs> are those like, are those Viori? Those yeah, pants? You guys didn't know they make the ca camel pants. Camel ripstop. Yeah, the ripstop pants. Why do you have? I didn't know Viori has camel. I can't believe you. Yeah, I didn't know. Well, now you always get the ripstop. That's your favorite. Yeah, well, they just, they're it's more glutes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I guess <laughs> it's just because it's the most comfortable out of all. So, does, there, does I don't have any rip stop. Um, and are they uh, stretchy too? They're not as stretchy. So, like the meta pants are more of the stretchy yeah, ones that are like kind of like. slacks. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it's just because it's light. It's like really light. So, it just feels like. So, can I tell you what those are good for? If you get them to fit right, 
squatting them. Now, they are a little tight, but oh, it yeah. kind of gives you support. Viore is the only pants I squatted, dude. Yeah, you now, back out. The only yeah, I'll, I'll shred anything else. Now, obviously, that's, <laughs> that camo is a little more casual, but the, the ripstop that like... So I, you wear this, these brown ones all the time. Are those ripstop also? Uh, yep. So I'm assuming, though, because those ones are a little, a little classier, You can you dress those up? Do you dress them up? Do you wear them like... Because I wear my... I wear my... What I, I love the about... the metal ones up. The metal ones? Bit. Yeah. Is those are like joggers, like comfortable... But I can wear them like with my yeah. pea coat. I can wear yeah. Meta is what I wear when I go out. Well, and now they have the shorts, the Meta like version yeah. of the shorts. So it's like really nice. So you uh, wear shorts, a button up and a tie which, with your shorts. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right yeah. So I, I want to. I got to finish the story. So I'm playing. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, at the arc- like I'm at the arcade. I'm playing Street Fighter. I'm using guy. I'm showing my three year old. He's almost four. Hey, look, Dad's awesome. And I'm beating people. And he's like, <laughs> this is so cool. And another dad. No, he mm- saw you do right that. around my like, age, bro, oh, with his son. Hey, with his son comes up and puts a quarter in to challenge me. Damn. No, he doesn't. Yes, he did, bro. No, he That's doesn't. old school. Yes. And I know he, he's my generation. Hey, That's did, what he we stick, did. did he stick it yeah, up he on the He put it like right above yeah, the he buttons. Put it up on the, on the, on yeah. the, he didn't have to because he just came right in. He, no, because nobody was playing. Like, I got oh. next. So yeah, he yeah. came in and he just, he, he, he put it in. And I, and I looked at him. He didn't like, even say hi. Nothing to Bro, he no. challenged like me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you have a challenger. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. Chung Lee. Hey, he, got, he got serious. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get my ass kicked by Chung Lee. Ryu, of course. Oh, he picked yeah, Ryu. Yeah, okay. so it was, I mean. And your guile? Is that your guile? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's no, great. Great battle. Oh, it is. It's, a, it's a classic. <laughs> classic. That's you again. Classic. First guy skin Barugan. How'd you do? I beat him, dude. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Oh, so oh, yeah. much. So, so much. first I beat him, and oh. it was like, oh, first, it was actually uh, two yeah, to one. Yeah, you couldn't really tell the story if you So lost. I win one, he wins one, I win one, he loses. Do you, hey, you mean mug his kid right after you do no, it? No, I'm like, oh, no. I said, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, they just learned a lesson today, hey, son. My son pushes his son. Losing. <laughs> yeah. Get him. Hey, get, him. You get your son a shirt says, my dad can yeah. beat up your dad. Yeah. You know, like, honor, yeah. you know, like the bumper dad. sticker for the honor roll kids? Yeah. Like, yeah. my kid can beat up your honor roll kid? I'm all, I'm all trying to be the nice uh-huh. guy. Son, son, we don't do that to losers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no but Let he, him cry in peace. Hey, I won. He puts a quarter in, and I did the most asshole thing of all time. He puts another quarter in to play me again. I'm like, oh, we got to take off. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just warming up. Sorry, bro. No rematches. I know, I know. Dude, my son, some of our sons, my son. Wait, we definitely are in a new thing. I, and I have to remember, I got to write it down. I wrote this one down so I wouldn't forget because the, the the sayings and the sentences and the things are flying right now. The latest, uh, he was like, I was looking around. He's trying to find Wiggler. Wiggler is one of his, uh, one of the characters from Mario. We have like every character from Mario that's ever existed. I didn't right? even know that one. Bro. Wiggler? There's characters you guys have no idea about. I mean, uh, obviously, yeah, I, yeah. I thought I knew everything. I've about seen Mario. them, but oh, I don't no. know the names. No, no, yeah. You guys have Half. no idea. It's a whole world. It is a whole world. Yeah. I mean, we're up to like I think 75 stuffed animals that are like characters from Mario that you don't have no idea. God, like I bet you couldn't. Like, where does he all get mean. villains? Where does he get that that trait of collecting things? Like, a lot of things. Where does he get that <laughs> yeah, trait? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> I'm not feeding this addiction, by the way. The genetic. Though. Okay. I just want to point that out too, because it's yeah. like I, th- th- I think we've talked about this before. Like you, you win some, you lose some with with grandparents, right? Like yeah. Oh, people, I, are, they know he likes it. It's so my it's like, my mother in law, and my mother in law sees him every single Monday. She's seen him that way. Does for he get one every Monday? Every Monday. Oh. Every single Monday special, when she, when, I know so it's like uh, this thing that I'm like yeah. torn like my and the, I guess the thing that I've accepted and, and justifies that this is this very special connection and bond that he has with yeah. him I'm not pro it I'm not a fan of it and stuff like that but it's something that he absolutely adores and then I also see the amazing benefit of it is like because Katrina and I at any point ever in the week or any time could go like hey you know what we need we need a break from our son or we want to go have a dinner date he is excited to go see Nana like I mean it can be anytime I want to go see Nana and she's trained that so there's I get perks out of it right so of course so anyways Wiggler is missing and we're like, I'm trying to help him find. Son, I don't know. Did you leave in the car? He says, No, Dad, I can't find it. And he stops in the living room. He's like, It's like a bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> Make it stop. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, What? It's like a bad dream. We can't find Wiggler. <laughs> like, where'd that even come from, dude? Yeah. He, oh, so he's been doing that lately. Now he's got these <laughs> new things that he puts together and says. And he, so he's like. I don't know how to. I don't know how I communicate that. Right? It's like he's starting to really understand. Right? Understand what that yeah. even means. Right? It's like we went. We're, we're we're moving out of the phase of like saying words and knowing what things are. Yeah. yeah. To more now, abstract. Like, yeah. Exactly. More yeah. abstract. Thank yeah. you. That's the words I'm looking for. Like they're more abstract ideas to say that. Like he yeah. knows that this sucks. That's so great. And he goes, "It's like a bad dream. This is like a bad dream." Oh, <laughs> man. That's well, so cute, dude. Speaking of so. 
Uh, my kids, uh, the first time we've ever thrown a party where we actually included the kids uh, was just recently. Was that the 70s party? Yeah. Oh. Because normally, I mean. You sent them away? Yeah, normally we, yeah, they'll, they'll go to their friend's house, they'll go to my parents' house, like whatever. And it's like, you know, because adults, it just seems like it's it's not really like, they're not going to have a lot to do. It's like we're, we're chatting, we're having yeah. some drinks, we're, we're playing a lot of music. Games. Yeah, they're just going to be playing video games off the corner or whatever. And so uh, we, we actually structured this party around, you know, being more like inviting for kids and like, so kids can come and then adults and like, even uh, like the parents. And I'm like, dude, this is such a weird, eclectic uh, group of people. Like we had like all these different like uh, walks of life all kind of in one place. And so it's like themed to seventies and, and all that. And so it kind of, you know, help, helps, I guess, for like some of the ice breaking stuff, like people kind of show up in ridiculous outfits and whatnot, but it was just funny for me to see like how much my kids enjoyed it. And we're like really into like the dancing part of it. Like, cause yeah, it was great. like all disco and stuff. And like, it was funny. Were they on the dance floor? They're on the dance floor, like doing the Travolta and oh. all this. And I'm like, where'd they even like learn this? You yeah. know? And they're like doing all these like crazy moves and stuff. Dude, a funny part though, the whole night. And I don't know if I told you guys this, but like, uh, so we kind of tried to plan it out. So we had a DJ and we had like, you know, all this stuff going on with the pool. So you had like kind of pool party and you had like, you know, music and all this kind of stuff going on. Uh, but it's like a, a sort of X factor. Courtney told me, she's like, well, you know, towards later in the night when like kids are gone, whatever, we're going to bring in like a, like a, like a dancer, like a go-go dancer. And I'm like, oh yeah, like, oh, that's, that's a good idea. And I'm like, I got this picture in my head of what, <laughs> you know, this go-go dancer was, you know, it was going to be on our like curved stairs doing like, you know, <laughs> like sexy things or whatever, you know? And uh, I'm just like looking around, I'm like, I don't see that, you know, any go-go dance or whatever. And then there's this one guy who I just didn't know. I'm like, who, like, do you know this guy? Like, Courtney, and he's, he's a really good dancer and he's doing his thing and all this. Uh, and and I, I come to find out later, like, that's the dude. dancer, it's a dude. <laughs> and he's got like this disco helmet and like, he's got this full cape and everything. And he's just like, you know, getting people out. He was a total hype man, but like. What a brilliant idea. I, that's, that's actually, actually not a bad idea. It was really, really smart that she did that. But she was, left that part out. She left dude. that part out. So I had this vision of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm thinking like nightclub, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. but, but it's yeah, a kid party. It actually, she was right. <laughs> she was right. She, she was, she yeah. made, but, but didn't tell me that. I think she strategically didn't tell me that, you know, like, you know, I was like, well, whatever. I didn't care, but uh, yeah, it was. It actually was a was great. He went out. And he was grabbing people, pulling him to the to the dance oh, floor. Really good dancer, nice guy, you know. And everything. Actually, I didn't even know that was a actually job. a really yeah. brilliant, yeah, job and strategy. I would have never thought about that. I didn't even know that's a job that exists. You I know, can actually right? hire. So somebody's job is to come to your party. Well, he's trying make to make it, a, it a job, you know. To, to to be fair, like we're trying to kind of like help, like you well, know, is spread this like a word buddy? for him. Or does he actually yeah. have like a website? So yeah, <laughs> he's working on. He's like he's working like, on. My wife like, hired a go-go dancer. You mean she yeah. picked out a cute guy at the gym yeah. and said, "Hey, yeah. come dance at my party." Uh, he's all texting my friend. It, it's all right. <laughs> he, I don't think Discount he's into code. women, but it's, um, my, it's yeah. my buddy who's between jobs right now. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good dancer. Pretty sure he's not into women. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So you, they're at like a wine bar. Her and her, her sister, and they're like trying to plan all this stuff for the uh, for the party. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy was there working and. He was like, you know, eavesdropping, and it was just like, oh, yeah, like, you guys have a part. He's like, well, I, and he's been, like, working deliberately on disco dancing. It was like, you know, he's what? like, I'm, I'm right now learning. It's so hard to read. It's so <laughs> random, dude. And she's like, oh, many, yeah. It's like, bro, would you like let, let me come to your party? <laughs> I I'm I am glad to. I know. I know. You know what you should do? You should hire me to come dance yes. at your party. Yeah. How did yeah. that conversation yeah. even totally. go? You guys need to. And then wait, did he like do some moves real quick right there in the coffee I shop? Like, wait a minute, we need to see if you know. What yeah, you're doing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, let's yeah. See Give me got. a hype reel or you know something. I don't. I have no idea. I wasn't there, dude. I didn't make this decision. Just, hey, so you're at the party. 
Some guy shows up. You don't recognize him at all. <laughs> don't know him. And you're just like, whatever. <laughs> Dude, he was not threatening. <laughs> that's not Sal, the point. It's yeah, how they get you, bro. That's <laughs> how they, <laughs> so they, you're like, yeah, sure, go ahead and use my master bedroom. Yeah, hey. <laughs> well, Where are my fine. watches? <laughs> we have nothing valuable there, dude. Nothing. The whole house is empty, that's dude. That's a good point. So, he, was all, he was all just he low, was all pissed low, off. Low risk. Hey, low very low up, risk. Like, I was you know, like, people could smash stuff. That was the other thing. That's his plan B. Plan A was the rock. Bobby, plan B was like, well, if they don't got shit, I'm just going to dance. Get paid. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'll make a few hundred bucks. He, yeah. He, or whatever. he had a good time. <laughs> That's so awesome. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it, was, it was totally random. Actually, dude. a really good idea for a business idea. Though. It is I, because I mean, it I've makes hosted, sense. We host a lot of parties, right? And there's always that uncomfortable moment of getting <laughs> dude, people to dance. You would like this hey, guy. Hire, you, hey, hire a rat like a juggler. <laughs> 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 just to show up. Like, who's that guy over there? Whoa. Look uh, at the guy. Hey, that, to me, I tell you. <laughs> is he your uncle? Like, yeah, when you guy? throw a party and you mix lots of groups of people, friends and family and stuff like yeah. that, I'm a big fan of like hiring people, things, or activities because it actually just kind of does. It I thought that's what sleep. alcohol did that. I thought that's what alcohol was for. Yeah, right? but, people, think, but not a lot of people are Yeah, people that, stand yeah. around and drink in their little yeah, high school right. you you know, had jello clicks. shots, you know what I'm saying? But, but if you bring, you, so far. you bring yeah. like somebody who does something, like it always like tends to do that. I, mean, I didn't know that. who you were dressed as. I saw your costume. I thought you were, sorry, I thought you were Curious George, the yeah, character yeah, guy. Yeah, anyway, yeah. but then you told him it was Burt Reynolds lounging around. I remember that picture of Burt. So yeah, it's But bro, I got to tell you. Pool party Burt Reynolds. You are- you look like a stud, bro. You're just like, yeah. just nice. what a great picture they it took was, of you. Yeah, th it was, that was all the the camera angles. So I appreciate. That. No, so, uh, I think yeah, that was good. that's yeah. what you look like, dude. With, with <laughs> tight, yoga, it was tight, yoga dude. Clothes on. Oh, dude, everything about seventy. It's Where like did you find the clothes? Gear. Uh, Where'd you go? Well, you know it's funny about that because it's like I was just like looking. I had no idea where I was going to go with this. I was like, well, do I do like Smokey the Bandit? You know, Burt yeah. Reynolds. Well, that would have been good. But um, it, it was like some ad, and, and this guy was like. You know, just in this like ridiculous, it, it, it was like the material that's um, towel material, whatever you call that. But terry, like, terry, cloth, terry cloth, yeah, shirt, and then like corduroy bell bottom. Like, what were they thinking? In this I don't, it? I have no idea. Let's but then something you put it on, and and again, like you say that I had a lot back. of compliments, and then like. Courtney had a lot of compliments. Like everybody that was wearing like the ugly, it looked great on everybody. You know, like, it was all body. They were on to something. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. it was like all form fitted. It wouldn't look it, good if you weren't if you weren't Jack, bro. It looked good on well, you. Well, yeah, yeah. It, thanks. Dude. I mean, <laughs> you know? it, there's no doubt in my mind. In 20 years, we'll look back to what the hell we're dressed right now, and we're gonna make fun of that too. So that's just kind of how it works. But we, <laughs> I love it when movies try to depict the future and they go way off. Oh, like, <laughs> in the future, everyone's gonna wear tin foil. Yeah, yeah. You know? they, everybody <laughs> wears triangles for yeah. series. It's like big triangles. <laughs> so I'm like, Stupid. why the fuck would you wear What happened? Do we yeah. have like a fashion yeah. well, revolution? That's not going to be obnoxious at all, you know, <laughs> just like pointing <laughs> into everything. Like, like, yeah. I hate when movies do that. They I go it too far. It ruins, exactly. Yeah. It, ruins a, it ruins a good movie. It's like, come on, why would you do that? Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah. Nanu, nanu. nanu. Hey, yeah. I saw, I yeah. that's, by the way, that's, that. a, yeah, that's yeah. a good reference right there for people that know. What is that? Mork and Mindy? Yeah, Mork and Mindy. That's a great one. I've been seeing this note on our notes for the show for a while. You don't bring it up. It's making me annoyed. What? I want to know about the fire ant predator fly oh yeah so it sounds fire cool ant fire fly. ants predator fly that's what the note I go says down rabbit holes of like creatures you know yeah. and now you is this a real one or did you get me. tricked like last time was this he, real? this is real okay <laughs> yeah. 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 not a fake animal when was the last time i had just that one time yeah, yeah, what, was one like, what was it was like a spider caterpillar oh, oh some yeah. guy put two of them god in <laughs> that kept me up at night though i was like freaked <laughs> out dude like I was so mad about that one. Uh, <laughs> He's gonna put it out in nature. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because dude, fire ants are so interesting. So you know how they like clump up and they make these balls. Yes. So uh, when it rains, bridge. and this yeah. is how they like survive anything. It, the, the hilarious part is like, <clears throat> literally, they say that cockroaches after nuclear fallout are gonna be like the only thing yeah, left. Dude, that's no, a joke. fire ants. Yeah, because oh, they they'll they'll dominate cockroaches. They'll eat them. They they they're tough. They're, they're indestructible. Do you know how much they lift? By yeah, the way? they their body so many times their body weight. So I was insane wrong. When you think about I was that. telling my kids I yeah. great grossly exaggerated. I was like sixty times their body weight. My wife's like, really? Let me look it up. No, it's <laughs> only like ten. Uh, it's like ten times their body weight. Oh, I actually thought it was that or more. So did I. Did I hear that somewhere? 
I heard that some. It's only we all ten heard it. times. Ten times. That's bro, well, seen, when they're bonded I've together, seen it's those like, ants carry like a cracker, bro. That's like that. I can't. There's got to be more. Those than are leaf cutter ants. I think. What is that? Twenty oh, times, according to this one. Three times. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty, 20, 20. times. Okay, so it's still more than ten. Is that the strongest? Is that the strongest ant, or do we have levels of strength here? I don't know if they've tested think, the ants. You know, yeah. individually. I think leaf cutter ants. Are any of them on maps anabolic? Yeah, I was just gonna say if you examine the exercise routines of ants, proper programming. I think the strongest inset. Insect pound for pound is a dung beetle. Yeah, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. With am that. I right? Yeah. Oh, a dung beetle. Yeah. A yeah, dung they, beetle. They're pretty Interesting. They, do. they go. They back. They get up on their on their front legs, push backwards, roll, and roll an, big uh, ass elephant shit balls of shit. Oh, it's yeah. usually elephant shit. Listen to this. They can pull up to one thousand one hundred forty one times their own body weight. Whoa. Dude, one thousand one. Wow, that's a lot. Dude. That's hold yeah. on. It's nuts. So like, if you like, let's say you weigh two hundred pounds, I gotta figure this out. You ever do this? So here? it's like if an average man was lifting two fully loaded eighteen wheel trucks. Yeah. <laughs> what? That's insane, Don't bro. they look like scarabs, kind of? Like, if yes. I'm trying to picture They're them, gross. Yeah. See, They're when scary. you hear things like that, right? And we haven't figured out, like, don't you don't you have, like, does your your, uh, um, your, your nerdy science mind go, like, there's still more that we could hack into and figure uh, out that our we're- Our potential's can, not even right. achieved. Like, yeah. yeah, when you see, when we, then there's examples of animals that can do things that we can't figure out or haven't been able to, does, does that not make your brain go like, yeah. at one day will we have the capacity or the ability I don't to, know if we'd ever be able know. to generate that much strength. We'll because, outsource it. You know, We'll find ways to get external sources. Well, there's limitations on, because I have thought about this. I did not, I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> look at, yeah. Oh, look, I'm it's glad got you asked that. I've been thinking about this. Before. In fact, I actually wrote a small paper yeah. on this, if <laughs> you want to see. <laughs> I was going to sell a supplement. The, 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 the our, chemical that makes our giveaway today is beetles. Yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, because of our, our muscle attachments, bone, how we have flesh on the outside, whereas beetles are like right, there's physics exoskeleton. To this. There's physics to this. There's right. only so strong. Right, right. Yeah, our bones would have to change their composition. Anyway, back to the fire ants. So, um, <laughs> how did I get <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't know what you did. I thought you were done with the fire. Yeah, but they've, so they, they, they keep trying, the only way you can get rid of them for the most part is like they take like boiling hot wax and then they like pour it down the hole and then like wait until it uh, cools off and then they dig it out so it like, Hardens. you know yeah it, it takes away the whole colony because okay. like yeah but so one new way that they figured out how to get rid of them which is creepy and it's it reminds me a lot of the zombie effect that you get from like cordyceps oh um but what they found is this one fly in particular i don't remember what it was called this fly but like they're they're now breeding this fly trying to then uh release it where these high volume places of fire ants it will it will fly and then and like literally like implant their eggs inside them and when it lands on these fire ants and then it'll eat them from within until their head basically pops off. <laughs> what? Well, wow, that's fucked up. Yeah, it's pretty pissed wow. up. Dude. What, what, and everybody's like, you? yay, we're going to get rid of fire ants. <laughs> and I'm like, we just created like, fucking, like a horrible nightmare of a fly. Like, <laughs> they, like that's disturbing. You know? Wow. Like, I, I was like, why do we always fuck where, with nature? Where, like, where, <laughs> where did you read this or where did you watch this? I, I was, I was so, like watching some nature documentary. That is it just so like blew my mind. Awesome. Katrina let me watch more of those. Yeah. She doesn't let you watch she it. She doesn't like she it. She hates it, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's like her and I are so aligned on so many things that we watch. Dude, like we I you, love that we get along you so know well. What I, there, but there's a few things and, and I and I think that's why I always say okay because everything else we watch together and we like. So there's not a lot of things she doesn't like that I like. That's the one thing dude, I like you, she doesn't like. Do you know what I saw that disturbed the hell out of me? I don't know how I saw it. It was on it was on a reel or something. Do you know how they get horse semen? Have you seen this? You know this because you worked on the farm. <laughs> yes. They get the horse to mount another horse. And then, then they, they switch it out. They move it to uh, the side. Yeah. And then they have like a sleeve. Like a funnel thing. And like, there's a person that just. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And holds it. And the horse is just like, huh? It doesn't even know any better. Yeah. And they take it off. And it's like, yeah, dude. Yeah. I saw a whole video on that. And there's people <laughs> that do that. That's your job. Your yeah. job. Yeah. Is to go Did get you the, watch the whole video? There was a clip. It oh, wasn't yeah, very yeah. long. Just, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, well, I'm just so I saw people were sharing the last time you brought up the, was it rhinoceroses, how they scratch their belly? Or was it or oh, yeah. elephants or whatever? Yeah, elephant. I, yeah, I saw, uh -huh. you, I saw people. You finally figured that out? Yeah, yeah. yeah after you said that. Yeah. Then I Did got they really tapped. scratch their I wanted belly? to make sure yes, people went. Yes, they scratched their belly. There's videos of that. Yeah, I wanted they to make sure people went to go. Yes, they used to scratch their belly. They can't have that much control. Yes. It's like they articulate it. Yes. It's. It's a thing. Wow. It's like a, Justin it's like an said appendage. that. I got tagged on like three different videos. Yeah. 
Wow. And I saw, I was like, oh my still, God. <laughs> still not as disturbing as the Big Booty Ghost. That's the worst. Oh, then that's yeah. just, yeah. The big that, Booty Ghost. What was that? We showed you the Big Booty the Ghost. The Juicy Booty oh, Ghost. Oh, God. That was yeah, stupid. that's disturbing. That's that the was, most disturbing. That was dumb. That was dumb. No, <laughs> that was, that Justin was, and I were both like, it's not I mean, like, people so, are buying. You guys were overly <laughs> fascinated with that. I was like, not. No, not, I'm not just fascinated. like, there's a market that's where, for that's this. That's where our content divert. Yeah. I mean, I'm watching different stuff. You know what I saw? That was cool today. I saw that Honda made a private jet. That looks cool and really reasonable. Look up, look up the price on it. Honda? Check it out. Yeah, Honda. Honda's in the bro. The when you say things like really huh. reasonable, are you like, is it really reasonable, or well, is it well, like, would the average person be like, that's reasonable, or is it, or is it more like, if you're a millionaire, it's like one point five million. Yeah. I don't mean that by reasonable, like, like financially, it's just like reasonable compared things. to other. Yeah, compared to things that like you're you're watching, like you guys are watching. Giant oh, butts oh, on goats. Mean price. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? <laughs> oh, I'm like, saying, like we're it's fascinated like, by the absurd. You like yeah, uh, yeah. tangible. You like Honda, like, like uh, bougie yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just, we got yeah, it. Different, different news feeds for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Only five to six million dollars. Oh. Is that what it is? Yeah. Wow. Now, okay. are you when you buy a really Honda reasonable. jet, private jet? Is it like? Like you, you roll up with that jet. Are you like the guy that all the other jet owners make <laughs> yeah, fun of? Yeah, they just like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a problem. Which, I, but that yeah. sounds crazy though, because that's not cheap at all. That's like, yeah. uh, so if it if it's that expensive, it's up there with some of the other. The other what does planes. it compete against? Is what I want to know. Uh huh. You know what I mean? It competes against what? What's the expensive one? Yeah. What's the one? That, what's the uh, one everybody's uh, talking about? Golf. Dream is it? No. Uh, yeah, it G7? Any, G7? No. Yeah, the G something. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Did I just G7, make that up? I think. Is it G7? It's Remember, it was uh, at the end of uh, Tropic Thunder where he's giving him the jet. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's how I know about that. Otherwise, did I tell you guys the the the, the, the the point about Rolls Royce? Did I say that? I tell you guys about that about that where they advertise? Last... No. Oh, I thought yeah, that was really interesting. That. Yeah, I, I thought I shared maybe the clip with you guys or something. Like that. Uh, th this guy, it was actually a sales a sales clip. I've actually shared it on the Mind Pump Trainer page. He has a lot of good sales training, and he was actually talking about brand and like yeah. the power of it, and, and being where your your yeah. customers are and everything. And uh, you know, he brought up a point that I guess I'd never even thought about. I was like, "Have you ever seen a Rolls Royce ad before?" No, never, right? No. And I also haven't. And part of the reason why I haven't is I've never shot for a private jet before. I guess anytime a private jet, a new private jet is released, there's always a there's always Rolls Royce there advertising their car mm -hmm. or their brand or the new. I one. saw. Wasn't there? I don't know if we you brought this up or there because there was somebody that worked on like yachts and was like they don't do any advertising obviously but like even then they all they all know each other yeah and yeah. so it's just like this closed circle you are right it was reasonable like typical jets are like 20 30 oh 40 oh, 70 wow. million Huge. so when you roll up in a five million dollar <laughs> Honda private you're jet. like the you're, you're like, like the, the prius the, economy <laughs> you're fucking like, you're like the dude that pulled up and a, well hey listen i was looking at it like what it's capable of the distance it's actually uh uh the fastest private jet Did I, so so speed wise it's supposed to go faster than these really? freaking 20 70 million dollars by ones. the way wow. i was up in Truckee, right there's a there's a there's a, there's air, a private jet there's, there's a, a private, private airplane yes. or uh airport there yeah so one of the guys I was with has flown in to Truckee before oh, to meet a, a client of his. He does financial advice. Most most of my family and friends are on these financial advisors. And he flew in on a private jet to, you know, meet with this guy or whatever. And he's like, dude, when they get over the mountains, they have to make a pretty steep like down go, like downturn in order to the, bomb in Yeah. There. So I was like, oh, that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> I would hate that. Yeah, you wouldn't do very well. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Right. So oh, is that it right there? Yeah. Bro, That's one of them. Anyways. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Wow, that looks cool. And the, and the speed, I think it's like 450 miles an hour, which I think is, I think. So I'm, small though, right? Like it's you're going to get some turbulence. Dude, when are we going to get the supersonic ones rolling out? Like I, I keep hearing all these whims that they're yeah. engineering them. See, I get scared. How many seats in there? Is that four? Just four oh, seats? Oh, no, you can fit more than that. Is it? I think that's just one section right there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm not too keen on flying in a tiny plane. I know. I mean, yeah, it's more you fuel everything. That's, that's for what sure. I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. Yeah, but don't you get to? Don't you have different like uh, flight rules than like a a commercial jet? Like where where how low or where you can fly and stuff no like idea. that. I don't. I don't yeah, know I don't either. Know. Do you no. know, Doug? I don't know. No idea. Who was it in here that was going to get a pilot license at one point? Was that you, Doug? No. Did you consider that? No, that wasn't me. All right. I probably tried to get Doug to do that. You That's what. It was. Oh yeah, I that think was you were it. trying to talk yeah, him yeah, into getting. I, so I, so I think I tried to <laughs> convince him to do that. <laughs> or hey, because that's half half the space, Dude. expense is paying a pilot. Hey, all the time. that's it. Hey, go go dancing. Doug can move. We hey. just found out about that business. Yeah, yeah. Go go dancing he's, private jet. Flight. Yeah, Doug shows up in a shows up. You're the hype man. In case this producer thing doesn't work out. Yeah. 
Good that's idea. Not, that's, that's, just, that's not a bad yeah. idea. So we uh, shout that's out. Your lap dances. Who are we going to shout out? Oh, Dr. Stephanie Estima. Yes. We just had her in the studio. Incredible. Um, interviewed awesome. her. I was, I've been on her podcast twice. Uh, she's exceptional. Um, when it What's comes her Instagram? To, um, what is that? I was it, supposed to look it up. You uh, were supposed to look up her Instagram and then maybe her podcast. Yeah, so it's Dr. Nice. Stephanie.estima, E S T I M A. Yep. And, and then we have Instagram. our podcast. Do you know what our podcast is called? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I have that as well. It's called Th Better with Dr. Stephanie. Yeah. She's so functional medicine. She knows her stuff. She also lifts. She used to compete. She understands nutrition, exercise, way more than the typical functional medicine. She sounds like, too, she's a menopause expert. Sounds like she, she spends she, a lot of time talking about that. She focuses a lot on perimenopause and menopause. So it's an awesome follow. Joy Mode is a pre-sex supplement that improves blood flow, gives you a bigger pump. It's true. It actually has ingredients that are science-backed. It really does work. It also is good for pre-workout. Better blood flow is good for lifting weights, too. Gives you a better pump in your biceps as well. Anyway, go check them out. Get yourself a hookup. Go to tryjoymode.com forward slash mind pump. Enter mind pump at checkout. Get 20% off your first order. All right, back to the show. First question is from Gabe1228. What is the best approach to calisthenics for building muscle and how often can you train with this style? You know, calisthenics really just refers to body weight style exercises. Really at their core, they are strength training exercises. The the one challenge you have with some calisthenics is the amount of resistance you can apply to your body for certain movements. So this is the this would be the criticism that they'll get for building muscle. It's like, well, you know, you can bench way heavier than you can push up and stuff like that. Um, I, there's a lot of creative ways to manipulate a movement and make the resistant heart resistance harder. I think if you're trying to build muscle with calisthenics, work your way up to high tension exercises. Those are the best for building muscle for hypertrophy. So these are exercises we're doing lower reps because. They're very challenging versus exercises where you're doing 50, 60 reps. I would say that probably the one negative about calisthenics, you have to get creative. Um, and so a lot of people don't have that sort of thought process of how to intensify this exercise, how to use gravity against you a little more effectively. Um, there are, though tools so it, it depends too is, is it just body weight like am i just you know right I can, I, can i use a suspension trainer can i use a pull-up can, that I, makes a big yes. can I do because then we're talking about a whole nother level of intensity and like uh um you know being able to challenge the muscles uh in your body in in, in a, an entirely different way and i think that there's a, so much value to that um, in a way you can really progress into a crazy level of strength. But again, like if we're just talking about calisthenics for building muscle and it's just like my body weight training in, in space, like you're going to have a pretty challenging time, like getting specific muscle groups, especially the lats and, and your posterior chain. Yeah. So I, the thing that, uh, I'm trying to think how the best way I'd articulate this for the, the average person who doesn't understand programming, right? Like, so if you unpack like it, cause the same rules still apply. That's it's right, not like, uh, trying, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, progressive load yeah the same rules apply, uh, that to, in order for the body to build muscle, it's not like the, your, you know, your muscular system knows that, oh, he's lifting iron. Therefore we're going to add muscle. It's like, it, 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 it it's re tension. Yeah, yeah. It under recognizes yeah. the tension and the resistance that the body is going on. And it says, oh, it need to adapt and build muscle, but you just run out of room when you're just using your body weight, but the same rules apply. In other words, if you, if I was doing a calisthenic program to mirror maps anabolic, it would like phase one, I'd have to find a way to do a chest, like you can't just do push-ups because I could do 50 plus push-ups really easy. Mm -hmm. So how do I make a push-up type exercise so challenging I can only get five? Mm -hmm. So what would that look like? And so uh, using what Justin's example with rings, oh, if I were doing like deep ring dips with my body weight, or if I was allowed to like use a, a weight under my legs and do a body weight to like, okay, now I could find a way to do a, a form of calisthenics to to rep you, uh, to replicate what a two twenty five bench for five would look like for me. So I you have to be able to do that, right? So if you're going by to, in order to try and compete with what weights can do for hypertrophy, you'd be surprised how far you could get if you have that creative mind. You're open to using tools like that. You understand the principles of programming. 
than you would. You would follow the same protocol as like an anabolic program, only you have to find ways to create that level yes. of, of tension and difficulty to keep your body in that rep range. Right, right? now, the less, the, 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 the as the tension is lighter, if exercises start to get easier, add more tension, figure out a way more add more tension, or, and add frequency. So calisthenics, especially when you get good at push-ups, you get good at bodyweight squats, you get good at, you know, uh, pull-ups even for some people, you can do them pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. So I've seen pretty good for general muscle strength and fitness calisthenics routines that tend to be, you know, 25, 30 minute routines, you know, four, five days a week type of deal. Frequency seems to work pretty well with this style of training. However, if you do what Adam and Justin were talking about, where you add rings and bars and you add tension, now it's more like a traditional strength training program where you're going in, you're targeting an exercise or mu a muscle group with high tension. Yeah. You're really getting a workout there and then you rest it. And the example that we have that this exists is, have you ever seen what a, a gymnast, a dude gymnast or a, a ring guy looks like? I oh, mean, they look like they're bodybuilders. jacked. They're, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they do some they they do do, I've never arms. seen one not jacked. They do some very yeah. high tension exercises, like the Iron Cross yeah. places tremendous stretch tension on the bicep and so it's, they say it's one of the biggest bicep builders pull-ups pull is too tons and tons of tons of pull-ups next question is from enzor 1515 are inversion tables and boots worth it have you guys could be had a client yeah. use inversion tables i've used i've used them before okay, yeah okay. yeah no i mean there's a place for it yeah if you have somebody who's like got a compressed Get i mean some the, traction yeah, yeah that's where that's it that's the value yeah i mean you're not uh you're not fixing anything. You're not, it's like, it's, it's kind of like I would put in the category of foam rolling, right? Mm. So uh, using a foam roller to b b before I go in and do corrective exercises and work, lots of value, right? Calm the central nervous system down, yep. relax that area that's mm -hmm. all tense, opens it up for now, allows me to go in and do the work to help work on stuff. If I have like, let's say like a compressed disc that limits my ability or causes like nerve stuff going on in my in my low back area or something like that. And I go, oh man, when I mm -hmm. open that up, boy, that really releases that. That allows me then to go do work. It's not like uh, Gravity Boots uh, does something you know, special. No, it's the, it's the value of traction. And, and traction essentially is, I mean, if I were to give, you know, <clears throat> Justin's wrist traction, I would grab his, his hand and pull it away from his forearm, right? I'm just kind of creating space in the joint. So when you're laying upside down, you're creating traction in your, the, the, the main areas are the spine and the hips. You're going to get some traction in the hips. Some people get, start to develop problems with their hips, with impingement and whatnot. So mm -hmm. it can be beneficial to create a little traction, a little space. And then mainly the spine. Like if you have an, if you have a herniated disc or an impinged nerve, yeah. by the way, you'll know because you'll, you'll do some, you'll lay back on one of these mm -hmm. or even just have a, a, a chiropractor or someone just create traction with you. And all of a sudden, you'll feel that that burning pain, that nerve pain that people tend mm -hmm. start to dissipate. But if you don't combine it with correctional exercise, it's just a temporary fix. And it's something you have to do all the time to get the benefit of. But if you can use traction, like you said, Adam, in a way to where I'm creating a little space in between the discs, now your nerve is not being fired on. Uh, okay, let's do some exercises you know, now. Mobilize it. Yeah. And That's work right. On that. That's right. Stability. That's right. And then, and, and now we're, we're using it together. So in my experience, um, you know, I worked with some really good correctional exercise individuals that use inversions tables. I don't have a ton of experience using them on clients, but through this individual, he would explain to me how he would do it. And he yeah. would, uh, in some cases do, do an inversion table before working out so they can get into certain movements. And in other cases he would use it afterwards because there were people he worked with where, after doing certain exercises, start locking up. He, yeah, they would lock up and the mm -hmm. traction that relaxed kind of, you know, hanging position yeah. kind of prevented that. Sorry to interrupt you right now. Maps GLP one is available. Brand new program for those of you taking a GLP one. It's a workout. We help you with your diet, your supplements, behavior modifications. It's the only workout program designed for people on a GLP one on the market. Of course, it's amazing because it's brand new. Get it for $70 off. Plus get two free eBooks. The first one is the ultimate medication guide for patients and practitioners. The second one is the intuitive nutrition guide. Go to mapsglp1.com, use the code GLP70, get $70 off, plus those free ebooks. All right, back to the show. Next question is from Ibrahim J201. When should you use a foam roller, therapy gun, or stretching for recovery? Oh, that is foam roller yeah. and therapy gun uh, are best used right before a workout to allow for greater ranges of motion and better technique and form. So to give you an example, um, some people will notice that they can get greater depth in their squats. If they foam roll, 
their IT band. And what the foam rolling essentially does when you're pushing on an area, the central nervous system eventually gets sends a signal that says relax that area. So the muscle softens. Now it's not firing as hard as it used to. Now you can do a movement the way you're supposed to. But the key here is to figure out why was it firing the way it, was, it wasn't supposed to, to begin with. And that's typically because there's some kind of a imbalance or, or, or movement pattern issue. Stretching, if it's static stretching, uh, Post, in most cases is at the end. Post, yeah. Yeah. yeah, mainly just to kind of get in that parasympathetic totally. state. And it's, it's great too to... Um, you know, just again to dampen that signal so you're not so protective because it's really just trying to protect you by staying tense and tight uh, and really allow you to kind of uh, rest, recover. Uh, I think, you know, static stretching at the ends uh, great for that. But yeah, it's, I mean, the foam roller and the therapy gun, like uh, I was totally misusing that, like when I was first uh, oh, yeah. introducing it to my clients all the time. And yeah. it was just like one of those go tos you're thinking you had to do that continuously. Yeah. This is the fix. This is the fix. We're, we're correcting, but you're not correct. We're just, we're allowing that, that opportunity now to yeah. gain that range of motion. Uh, I mean, I, I totally did that. I, um, shoot, I did it myself for years so did I. Uh, before playing basketball. I had really, I used, brought up it and like I had to do it in order to play basketball. Uh, but I never went in and addressed my hip mobility and hip strength. Uh, which is why it was tight. Which is why it was tight. Yeah. And I talk about this all the time on the show that that all came when I unlocked my squat depth. When I started doing 90-90s, I unlocked my squat depth. That ability to go into a deep squat now allowed me to strengthen all the muscles that surround around my hip and support my hips. No longer ever had to full roll my IT ever mm -hmm. again. And so mm -hmm. it's like crazy when you actually otherwise i had to foam roll every single time i played basketball because mm -hmm. i wasn't addressing the root cause i was just putting a band-aid on by the way static stretching is excellent before bed i was just gonna say that's the time i do it so i at post workout or at right before bed yeah, now because it induces a parasympathetic state so if you have if yep. you feel while you're sleeping anxious or tight or restless sometimes uh static stretching for 15 minutes gets the CNS to calm down and put you in that relaxed place. By the way, with all of these, it's important you yourself relax while you're doing them and you breathe slowly. Because sometimes people will get into a, use a foam roller and it hurts. They're trying to achieve a range of motion. And they're, and like, they're, yeah, really they're pushing it. They're uh, gritting and making it like a sympathetic movement, actually fighting the fact that they're trying to go parasympathetic. It's super, it's so much more effective Counterproductive, to, yeah. to relax your face and breathe through it and let your body get into that parasympathetic state. Next question is from Pete Kendrick one after so many years in the fitness industry, what are some of the things that still get you excited about it? Great question. It is a good question. And <clears throat> maybe because we just talked about it in this episode that this is on my mind, but I can't remember the last time that I was this curious and excited. Also maybe even nervous about the peptide in particular GLP-1 market, I think that is probably one of the most disrupting things yeah. I've ever seen yeah. in my career. Super new. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that does not excite me. When you talk about fitness trends as far as group fitness classes, about tools like tonal, you know, we're talking about guns and you know massage stuff, like that's and supplements. The latest thing yeah. that, that none of that excites me. That's all. That's all rebranded. Same same stuff I've seen forever. Nothing's revolutionary. The most revolutionary thing I feel I've seen in a long time is the introduction of these peptides. Yeah, good, in, bad, or otherwise, it's going to have yeah, a huge impact. Yeah, in yep. particular, BPC one five seven and semiglutide. I find as massive disruptors in the fitness health space because of the recovery abilities from BPC and because of what semi-glutide is doing to the obese, uh, and we have an yeah. obese epidemic right now. Yeah, so. I would agree. It's, it's the new thing, yeah. but it's not just the new thing. It's this, like, it's this thing that's got real massive cultural worldwide, uh, implications, but there's another thing in the fitness space that has always um, gotten me excited. It, 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 now it's changed and morphed just because the space does, but it's always it's, it's it's it has existed as long as I've been in the space, and that's personal training, coaching, and it's taken on different form now. Now you have online coaching, which didn't really exist when I was a trainer, but I love it. It still gets me excited. The most exciting thing that we do is when we're talking to coaches uh, and trainers. That's that's uh, oh, that's that was good, my passion. That's good. Yeah, yeah. and, and that's it was fair. it was my passion. And it still is because it never gets old. It never gets old because people are always fascinating to me. And when you're coaching and training people, 
you are mastering how you help guide and lead someone to making these really hard changes. There's very few things in the world that people attempt as often as weight loss and fail as often as weight loss or keeping it off. It's like a massive fail rate and yet people try all the time. So to me, it's always fascinating. Can we get better? Can we find better ways of coaching people? Can we find better strategies? What are we saying wrong? What are we doing wrong? What are we doing right? Um, and so it's just, it's never ending fascinating for me. Yeah, it just seems to me that um, it, what we're finding and what we found forever is like it, this is such a, a human behavioral aspect that like needs a connection with another human being. And, and all these AI trends and all of these software programs and all of these things we've tried to offload that responsibility to has not worked, you know, and I just don't, I don't see that, uh, until, uh, there's a real personable aspect to that mm -hmm. where they can peer into like the, the confidence of that, that individual releasing that information of like, um, you know, here's, here's my like very personal habits and here's, you know, what I, what my tendencies are. And like the coach is the one that's con continuously extracting that. Uh, and I just, I don't see that working, uh, any other way uh, mm -hmm. in the foreseen future. So that that, uh, that does excite me in that yeah. sense. I, I can't believe I missed that. I can't believe I missed that as probably the most exciting thing right now. I guess I was thinking more about things that the yeah. fitness space has introduced like new or whatever. Um, but that excites me about, in particular, our business. It also, you know, is one of the ways that we can generally impact the world positively when you think about it. Oh. Yep. There's not many, like we, if we go out and, you know, right now we have what, 850 to 900 or so trainers underneath us that we're helping. Those 900 trainers, if they have, even if they just have a small following of a few hundred people or they have clients that they're going to train over there and we impact their lives positively and get them to be better coaches and better trainers, yeah. uh, indirectly, the amount of people that we're technically able to help that way, that's really, that's but, pretty cool. I feel like it, we felt such a deficiency you know, especially the last few years of being away from everybody. It's like, it, it has really brought that to the forefront of how necessary it is to have human, real human connection. Yeah, look, the, the, the data stands at this, like 90%, maybe a little more of people who lose weight end up gaining it back. So that's a fail rate of at least 10%. I believe with my entire heart, and I would put money on this, that good coaches, a decent coach, not the best. I'm not talking about the best ever. Just someone who does a good job, who knows what they're doing. Somebody has got the passion for it, but understands how to communicate properly, understands the strategies, knows how to avoid pitfalls and forecasts and all that stuff, manages their business and works with people well, should at least, at least quadruple that, if not more. I think a 50% success rate is reasonable. And that, that represents mil tens of millions, if not hundreds of million people every single year who attempt and fail, we could save, we could help get them uh, on the right path. And I can't think, there's very few things that I can think of that could have a more positive impact on everything than getting everybody healthier. Like think about that right now. If we could get everybody healthier, what else would that change? Well, that changes, well, that there's nothing that, that wouldn't change. Does it change everything in a more positive way? Everything. So it always gets me excited and I, and I start getting esoteric with it because I get so excited. Uh, but I'm excited to be working with, with coaches and trainers. I can't wait to see what that ends up turning into. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out.